Hi, and, and welcome. My name is um, Dr. Adrienne Neidhart, and I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist at Boston IVF. Um, and this is just part of our series of trying to educate uh, our patient population and our future patient population about different topics that uh, may be of interest to you. Today, we're going to be talking about um, intrauterine insemination, otherwise known as IUI, and contrast that with uh, in vitro fertilization, otherwise known as, as IVF. Just to start with um, IUI, so as I mentioned, IUI is called intrauterine insemination. Um, otherwise, used to be called artificial insemination. Uh, what it means is that it's taking moving sperm and inseminating it or putting it inside the uterus at the time we expect the egg to be there. Um, you contrast that with in vitro fertilization, which is where we can take we take the eggs out of the ovary, combine it with the sperm in a lab to create an embryo, and we put the fertilized egg or embryo back inside the uterus. So um, who, who would qualify for, for e either of these procedures or both of these procedures? Um, we often think of IUI as the starting treatment, and in the past, I think it was it was thought of as it was a necessary necessary step before you can actually move to IVF, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, although there are different insurers and payers who do require you to go through those steps, um, intrauterine insemination can be done with a woman's natural cycle. So in cases where um, there's male fertility, whether uh, there's low, lower sperm counts or for women who are utilizing donor sperm uh, because they do not have a male partner, IUI is often a very successful and minimally invasive procedure that can be timed to a woman's natural menstrual cycle. Um, other cases where we use it would be heterosexual couples with unexplained infertility who are trying to increase their overall odds of conceiving any given month. And in those situations, we often combine the intrauterine insemination with uh, low dose fertility drugs such as Clomid or Letrozole, which are oral fertility drugs that can optimize um, ovulation. We also can use IUI for women who do not ovulate regularly. So who, where we use an oral fertility drug to get them to release an egg, and then we put the sperm there at the time the egg is being released. Those are the basics of it. Now to talk a little bit more nuanced as to who, who should use this technology first and who's it for. So first and foremost, um, we need to know that there are open fallopian tubes. When you do an intrauterine insemination, the the egg is released by the ovary, it's picked up by the fallopian tube, and the sperm and the egg meet up inside the fallopian tube, that's where fertilization occurs, and then the embryo makes its way back down to the uterus to implant. So by definition, you need to have open and functional fallopian tubes. And we can screen that ahead of time, at least we can know that tubes are, are, are open. It can be a little bit more difficult to determine whether or not they're functional. We also need to have enough moving sperm to have a decent success rate with, with IUI. So in cases of more severe male factor fertility, IUI may not be a good option because the success rates may be so low that you would be better served going directly to IVF. Other, um, other situations where I recommend limiting or pot potentially even skipping the IUI phase can be women um, who are of older reproductive age or who have any signs of diminished ovarian reserve who have a more narrow reproductive window. Because by definition, success rates with IUI aren't that high. The, the idea of an IUI is to get a patient back to a normal chance of fertility any given month. And what does that mean? If you look at a heterosexual couple without fertility issues who are trying to conceive, there's about a 15 to 20% chance any given month. Um, a couple who, a heterosexual couple who has unexplained infertility, your chance of conceiving without any treatment is probably only five to 8% a month. So the idea of doing an IUI, whether it's medicated or with your natural cycle, is to get you back up to that normal fecundity, that normal fertility rate. However, if you're 39 or there's signs of diminished ovarian reserve, 
you know, your, your chance of success with IUI may only be about 10%. And that can take a lot of time before you see the outcome that you desire, which is an ongoing pregnancy. And, you know, could your reproductive window possibly close in that time? And that's why for, for women with diminished reserve or at um, older reproductive age, I recommend considering going straight to IVF or a limited number of IUI cycles before you move forward. The contrary to that are, as I mentioned before, women who are using donor sperm and don't have known fertility issues of their own, good ovarian reserve, younger reproductive age, actually have some of the highest success rates with, with IUI and really could benefit from either natural cycle or low dose fertility drugs in conjunction with IUI. Um, let's switch gears a little bit and just talk about IVF. Um, IVF meaning in vitro fertilization. No matter what the diagnosis or a woman's age, it does tend to be associated with higher chance of pregnancy per cycle um, because it's taking an already fertilized embryo and it's putting that embryo where it needs to be inside of the uterus. Um, couples who medically need to go right to IVF, some situations, women who have blocked fallopian tubes. We know that surgery to try to unblock the fallopian tubes is usually not very successful, and IVF is really your, your only option in that situation. Um, severe malfactor infertility, where the success rates with IUI are very much dependent on the amount of moving sperm that's there. So men who consistently have lower amounts of moving sperm, those couples would benefit in going right to um, IVF. Couples who have known genetic diseases, um, either they carry a, a, a genetic condition themselves or are at risk of having a baby with a certain genetic condition. We, during IVF, we can do something called PGTM where we can test the embryos to make sure we don't transmit that, that disease to your offspring. Um, and then sometimes couples who are at more advanced reproductive ages make the decision to go to IVF sooner just to shorten the time it takes to achieve conception. Um, IVF, by definition, is a little more of a lengthy process, a little more invasive and costly, but sometimes you have to balance that with success rate. If IUI may be um, less expensive, but if you're going to need to do it for several months and then potentially still need to go to IVF, you add up that time and that cost, sometimes they kind of balance each other out. Um, IVF requires a little bit more advanced planning just for education purposes um, and to get you ready to make sure you're going to have the most optimal outcome. It consists by definition of two parts that can be done separately or together. And the first step is ovarian hyperstimulation where you are on injections of fertility drugs to get multiple eggs to grow. We take those eggs out, combine them with sperm in a laboratory to create embryos. We allow the embryos to grow because not all of them are going to grow. That then allows us to select the healthiest embryo to transfer back to the uterus and freeze whatever embryos we don't transfer back. In some situations, we create the embryos and we freeze them all. Um, and all of that really depends on your personal circumstances and your wishes. Um, one benefit that I always tell people to think about when you, when you compare IUI versus IVF in good candidates with good reserve, most couples will have excess embryos to freeze that can be used either for another try or hopefully for another baby down the road. And so that also helps improve the efficiency. So if you think of your total family planning, you may be able to achieve that with IVF rather than having, you can see with IUI, have your baby a couple years later, you come back and you're starting all, all over again. So these are all. Um, nuanced topics and are again very very person specific and everyone's medical situation personal situation background is all very very different and a reason why you should have a discussion with your with your fertility doctor about which treatments might best meet your needs um, of course you can always find out more information at bostonivf.com um, about the different procedures that we offer and that are there thank you